Zoax.net. Lesson 55, Space Invaders. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in lesson 1. Since I have been explaining binary and bitwise operations in the prior lessons, I thought I would demonstrate how they were used in graphics and animation in the early days of computers. One of the earliest commercial video games was Space Invaders, which featured spiffy graphics like these. Although the graphics appeared in three colors, white, green, and red, against a black background, the actual screen only displayed white. The red and green coloring was accomplished with color overlays, so as a bullet went up the screen, it would change from green to white to red. Since the screen only displayed black and white, these colors could be encoded with binary, where zeros are used to represent black pixels, and ones are used to represent white ones. In this lesson, I want to explain how bitwise operators that I have been describing were used in early computer animation. Since this is a console lesson, I cannot show any graphics. Instead, I will display zeros and ones, as before, in binary numbers. I will begin with a short program that displays a simplified Space Invaders type screen. In the main function, we have an array of three unsigned integers that represent the screen with invaders on it. The numbers are given in hexadecimal, where C equals 1100 in binary. So the first two numbers are repeated patterns of two ones and two zeros, like this. After the array is initialized, we call the print bit rows function. The print bit rows function takes an array argument and contains a for loop that calls print bits on each of the three entries of the array. The print bits function is similar to the other functions that I have used to print integers in binary in previous videos. This function contains a loop that runs 32 times and outputs each bit successively. So if we compile and execute this program, we see three rows of bits which correspond to the entries in our array. For our purposes, we want to look at this as a screen of black and white pixels where each cluster of four ones represents one of our space invaders. Next, I want to expand the program a little, so I have added a function called shift rows right. This function runs through the three entries and does a single right bit shift on each one. Inside the main function, I have added a loop that prints the rows and calls the shifting function twice. So if we compile and execute the program now, we see three sets of three lines. We can think of these as frames of animation. The invaders start out at the left of the screen in the first frame and move right twice until the rightmost invader hits the right edge. This is how animation was accomplished through a series of bit shifts. Finally, I want to add a little more code to the program to send the invaders down and then back to the left. To do this, I need to add the functions shift rows left and move rows down. The shift rows left function does exactly what the shift rows right function does, except that it uses left shifts. The function move rows down does exactly what it says. It sets each row equal to the one above it and sets the top row to zero. By this method, it allows the graphics to move down the screen so the invaders can land on Earth. Inside the main function, I have added a call to move rows down followed by a loop of calls to shift rows left. After each of these calls, I output the screen using print bit rows. Executing the program, we see six frames of animation. In the first three frames, the invaders move to the right. In the last three frames, they move down and then back to the left. This sequence of frames demonstrates a slightly more complex animation. Even though we don't write games like this now, it is still important to understand these techniques. Bit shifting is a very fast operation, and there are times when it is still useful, particularly in optimization. A project file containing this last full program is available for download on this lesson page at zoax.net.